Alright, so for today I've originally planned to show you my build on the Nightmare. I did plan to show you uh, what rigs and builds and fit I use for this ship. But some things came up along the way. To, to be precise, someone placed a 1 billion ISK bounty on one of my ships. I believe it's for the Balgorn or Nestor. Or even maybe on the Ortus. I don't have the exact info at the moment, but I'll definitely find out who did that. Now, the Nightmare is basically the tankiest ship in this game, the tankiest battleship in this game. The Balgorn did not let me down, I still love this ship, it's still working quite well, but I've encountered some more problems with it. And I decided for, for now, uh, I decided to fly a different ship, primarily the Nightmare, until I find the solution for the Balgorn. On paper, the math shows me that it should work quite well. But uh, in reality, when I throw it I'm at talking. a risky situation, like I usually do, then it doesn't perform just as well as uh, the math showed. So I still have to find some small solutions uh, to that problem. But still, the Balgorn remains uh, one of my one of my favorite accepted. ships, and it also remains one of the deadliest ships in this game. All right, well, uh, that leaves us with the ship that I decided to fly today. It is one of the ships that I've been told to try out for a very long time now, and finally I did get my hands on one of these ships. It is the Golem or the Raven Striker, but I just prefer to call it Golem because it's just shorter and faster and you immediately know uh, what that what ship it is. So, uh, the Raven Striker is one of those ships that I personally wasn't quite interested in. Although, uh, I did look at the stats and on paper it looks pretty good. Now, let's quickly go and take a look at the skills first. Advanced Large Missile Torpedo Upgrade Bonus. Parallel will give you plus 6% Large Missile Torpedo Damage, minus 5% Large Missile Torpedo Activation Time, plus 5% large missile torpedo flight velocity. And of course you get a advanced command bonus, which will give you plus 5% flight velocity per skill level. Which on paper is pretty good, it looks pretty nice and on pair with the other strikers. Ship has 2 drones, 7 high slots, 4 medium slots, 6 low slots, 3 combat and 3 engineering rigs, overall uh, very good. The Raven Striker is primarily a shield tank. Please do not attempt to use a armor tank on any Raven. I did fight one armor tank Raven a couple days ago and oh man, I still have... I, I don't know, uh, that, that ship was uh, uh, not pleasant to look at the kill mail of that Raven, trust me. The rest of the stats on this ship are looking pretty good. It has a decent capacitor which did kind of surprise me. In practical use, the capacitor did perform uh, better than it's written in the ship description. It's also average in speed. The flight velocity bonus does give uh, a little bit more, a little bit more speed bonus on uh, on the Raven. But overall, the rest is very comparable and average to the other strikers. All right, well, let's jump on the fit that I have for the Raven. Now I personally like to use rapid missiles on battleships because they're very good at dealing with a wide range of ships that also includes, uh, that also counts on the Raven. 46 km missile range, a decent velocity, very good activation time of 5.25 seconds which is pretty good like I said. And of course uh, the explosion velocity and explosion, uh, explosion radius can be improved, although for a battleship at the moment it looks to be pretty good. Now I have uh, three adaptive shield hardeners, dual shield boosters and an afterburner in the low slots. This is primarily a PvE build. Now as for the rigs, well combat rigs have the good old tank configuration. I love to use tank on basically all battleships. Because I found out that 
the average DPS is usually uh, more than what you need and well for prolonged fights uh, tank is definitely way better than going full DPS. A good exclusion to that can be uh, can be Apocalypse Stiker. Now this is the build with dual capacitor batteries which makes the capacitor stable. You can use one capacitor battery with an afterburner if you like, that also works quite well. This is the configuration with the afterburner and uh, with the capacitor battery. Dual webs, scrambler and Nosferatu. Neutralizer is recommended to use as defense for small tacklers, especially if you use this ship to run missions. Although with this configuration, the capacitor is not stable. It runs down pretty quickly. With dual Nosferatus, the capacitor is almost stable, although it's still uh, minus 5.1%. And with one Nosferatu, you get a pretty decent 60% stability, which again uh, is pretty good. And 18 minutes and 25 seconds cap runtime with a afterburner using this configuration, which is pretty good, should last a very long time. Now, uh, you can also swap into the normal large missiles. I personally don't like to use large missiles, except on the Bargast, because the Bargast is basically... Bargast has the best missile bonuses out of all battleships, and it works pretty well even against, even against smaller targets. Now, the large missiles have a little bit more range, a little bit more speed, a little bit more damage, but they have a, they have quite a bit of activation time, 12 seconds, which is twice as slower. I still use the same rigs as before. Now you can also use ballistic control systems for large rapids because they have good range. You can use the ship as a long range ship if you like. 1.7 thousand DPS cold. Let's take a look at the hot DPS the ship can do and of course let's take a look at this ship when it's in siege mode. Now uh, let's, ta let's take a look at the fitting window. 2.4 thousand DPS. Well, it's not that bad with uh, the current build that I use. 256 thousand effective hit points with one shield hardener. 3.7 thousand DPS in siege mode. That's not bad. Now, the catch with the siege mode. On paper, like I said, it looks pretty good. But when you look at the stats, 6.9, well that's actually nice number there, if you know what I mean, uh, back, to, back to the game, uh, 6.9 meters per second explosion velocity, and oh man, uh, that's, that did not look good at all. Now the seed mode does give you extra damage, but you receive some very nasty penalties on basically all weapon systems, and I believe the missiles are mostly affected by this. Uh, basically, in siege mode, you shouldn't be even shooting at anything that's smaller than a dreadnought or a citadel, which is the only target that the ship can shoot in siege mode, and uh, it can damage only like these targets. Now, with rapid missiles. 2.3 thousand DPS with the normal, with the dual ballistic controls active. Speed is almost 600 meters per second. I forgot to change. Uh, I forgot to check the speed uh, earlier. Let's take a look at siege mode. Oh man, <laughs> I'm already kind of afraid to look at the numbers. 3.5 thousand hot DPS in siege mode, which is not bad on paper. But the damage application is going to be terrible. 7 meter per second explosion velocity. 1060 meters explosion radius. You know, you can technically outrun the explosion velocity on foot or on a bicycle if you don't like running. 
and that is kind of kind of very funny imagine the missile falli falling from the sky and hitting the ground and you start running away in the opposite direction you have a good chance of outrunning the explosion of uh, this in siege mode of course uh, and oh man it will be fun to test this out on some ships I'm very curious to see how much damage the Raven will do against ships in siege mode. And now, before I forget, let's take a look at the first PvE build that I have with uh, three adaptives. Should be pretty good tank. Okay, almost 400,000. That's pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, I think I can also increase the resistances a little bit. But this should last a very long time. It's already uh, very tanky, so it looks pretty good. I like the resistance so far. Now, as for the PvP build, well, for the PvP build, I would stick to the good old classic Raven, uh, Raven PvP build with three adaptives and three shields. Not hardeners, but uh, three shield extenders. It should give a decent, decent amount of shields, and that should technically increase the effective hit points by at least 120,000. So let's take a look. And it's also cap stable with this current build. Okay, 474,000 uh, effective hit points. It looks pretty good. Uh, and for PvP, I would stick with this build. It is super tanky. It can also be done the same way with the Balgorn, although I prefer the Balgorn to be an active tank, but <laughs> that might be a bad idea to be honest, I don't know. 210 meters per second is the flight velocity, although uh, it is super tanky with that build. Alright, well, um, time to take uh, this ship out for a spin and see what it can do. Now, uh, like I said before, I'm very curious to see how much damage it will do uh, to a variety of ships in siege mode. And well, uh, let's take, let's see what will happen. I mean, the numbers are not looking to be promising, so uh, I might be wrong. Maybe the damage will not be that bad with siege mode on. Alright, siege mode active. The target is that battleship at the moment. Well, um, 611 damage on a battleship in siege mode with rapid missiles. Oh man, that does not look good. I guess the numbers did not lie. Outside of siege mode, it does decent amount of damage. Pretty good alpha. A little bit lower than, uh, than the Barghest. But again, I'm comparing the striker with a faction battleship that specialized in missiles, so it's not kind of fair to do that. Although, uh, in practical performance, the Bargast is outperforming any missile ship that there is. Well, um, outside of siege mode, it does a decent amount of damage, and so far it looks to be okay. I'm not complaining about the damage output outside of the siege mode. Now, if it barely scratches a battleship in siege mode with rapids. What kind of damage will it do against smaller ships like battle cruisers, cruisers, frigates, interceptors? Well, um, I guess uh, we are about to find that out very soon. Once I finish with that battleship, I will go after that frigate. Yeah, uh, let me just turn on. Oh, okay, it was... Let's just turn off the siege mode and let's quickly finish with that. I thought that if I web the target and if I turn off their mic web drive that I would do more damage. Seems like that's not the case. Well then. Let's shoot at the frigate. 133 damage in siege mode on a frigate. Well, that doesn't look good at all. 
I mean, I'm not surprised based on the numbers that I've seen, but that's, uh, you know, the other strikers are usable in PvE missions in Siege Mode. Apocalypse Striker, phenomenal in Siege Mode. The Megatron Striker absolutely shreds in Siege Mode, can get up to almost 10,000 DPS, which is pretty terrifying. And Tempest Striker can also uh, do plenty of damage in Siege Mode, because generally I believe it has the highest alpha damage out of all battleships. So uh, that leaves us with the Raven Striker practically useless against anything that's smaller than a Dreadnought or a station in Siege Mode. Which is putting this ship on the... I guess on the lower end of the Strikers? I don't know. I mean it does still plenty of damage outside of the Siege Mode, but the clear time is going to be significantly lower if we compare it to uh, the other Strikers. Because the other strikers can easily sit in siege mode and they can easily wipe the the whole wave without a problem. Which I can't say the same about the Raven Striker. So I've been playing around with the ship for a while and I figured out it's pretty good uh, outside of the siege mode, which is kind of very obvious. And that uh, leaves us with the question, uh, which tier 10 battleship should you use if you like to do missions? Well, uh, I believe the Typhoon 2 has a lot better damage application. Typhoon 2 overall uh, should be performing way better on paper than the Raven Striker in the same conditions. So... If you are looking for a PvE missile ship and if you don't have enough uh, ISK to afford a bargain, then I guess the Typhoon line is pretty good. Because I believe the Typhoon 2 should perform a lot better. Although I kind of I kind of forgot what's its optimal uh, optimal DPS. Is it more than the striker? I don't know. I mean, in this case for this ship, the extra DPS from the siege mode is practically useless. Again, against uh, anything else that's smaller than 50 kilometers. So, uh, it's significantly, I, I guess this ship is getting outperformed by a lot of other ships. And I believe the Raven Striker is one of those ships that really deserves a good old buff. Or the Siege Mode needs to be reworked because there is a big, big disadvantage if you use the Raven Striker. Now, I, I thought about using target painters, but that leaves me vulnerable against tacklers. And, well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're not gonna do a lot of damage to interceptors in siege mode with this. So... I would actually avoid using the siege mode if you have this ship. I would avoid to use the siege mode in anything else besides a uh, station CTA or if your target is a Dreadnought. It should hurt Dreadnoughts quite a bit and might be very good against big ships. Which is kinda similar to the Phoenix. Up until recently the Phoenix also had terrible, terrible uh, damage application. Was practically useless against anything else uh, except, again, a capital ship or a station. They fixed it. Now the Phoenix is uh, a lot better than it was before. I really hope that this ship gets uh, a, uh, a a fix because it's it does not look that good in siege mode at the moment. Now uh, I picked up the normal large missile launchers, and well, um, I got curious to see how much damage will this do 
in siege mode against any other ship on the field. So, uh, against frigates, as you can already see, I'm not doing too much damage on that interceptor. <laughs> now let's enter siege mode. Oh man. Let's see what shocking number I'll get. I'm very curious actually. Seven damage. Seven. That's all. <laughs> what? I mean, okay, eight, okay. Eight damage once I activate. Once the missiles uh, get hold of the ballistic control. <laughs> That's terrible. And I feel bad for saying this, but that's terrible damage. <laughs> With the Barghest, I did get... I did. I could actually pop frigates in, in the Barghest because of the damage application and of, of course because of the buffs. But this in Siege Mode, yeah, do not even think about shooting frigates in Siege Mode with this. And I know uh, a lot of players do panic when they get jumped and that's one of the main causes why uh, they lose uh, their ship now um let me make something clear uh, at the moment because i think i sound like i don't like this ship i like the raven i, I like this striker uh, and i find this ship interesting because you can use it a couple of these ships can be used to smack down a dreadnought in no time so it definitely has its use it's good in that aspect but if you are looking for classic pvp then i would really really avoid using the siege mode uh, on uh, any other ship including a battleship now i believe you can change the, you can improve the stats of the missiles if you use different rigs. That's a fact. You can you can change the rigs and you can make the application the damage application on this uh, be pretty good. And still, in siege mode, you are not going to do a lot of damage to practically any ship that's not a capital ship. Again, uh, you can get some decent damage out of on this even outside of the siege mode, and this ship can be extremely tanky, which works uh, quite well. So I can see the Raven Striker be used in PvP as a very tanky brawler that uh, is not going to go down very easily. So in that aspect the ship works pretty well. Now uh, again I would set the siege mode button at the other page of the, of the modules because sometimes by accident you can click on the siege mode and you can activate it which can happen and you might not even notice it so uh, siege mode only in certain situations in 99% of cases don't use the siege mode on this ship now I'm shooting a cruiser here and I did laughable damage on it as well outside of the siege mode it does pretty good damage it has decent alpha damage I'm not complaining about the alpha damage, it's pretty good. So, uh, in that aspect, this ship is working quite well. And I can see the Raven Striker being used as a sniper. You can make at least 200 km range with the normal large missiles, which is pretty good and uh, works quite well for storyline missions. And of course, works also quite well for sniping. Now, let's take a look at how much damage uh, they will do in siege mode against uh, that battleship. The Rapids did 611 damage. This will do... I expect a little bit more to be honest, but we're about to find out. Well, almost the same. 22 more damage on the, on the large missile launches. And yeah, that is pretty bad. Outside of the siege mode should be a whole different story. Let's see how much damage it will do now. Outside of the siege mode. That one that hit uh, was still within the siege mode, so that's why it was uh, pretty low.
Okay, that's that's actually not bad. 11,000 alpha damage on a battleship. That's actually pretty good. At this range, it's actually very scary. Apocalypse Tiger can do similar damage, but at 30 kilometers. This ship does the same damage, around the same amount of damage, at 100 kilometers. So, uh, that is actually pretty good. And I can see these missiles and this kind of this build be used in this way without a problem. Of course, again, outside of the siege mode. And I'm applying outside of the siege mode because I don't want to get confused. Um, and I don't want to see... I don't want to see a lot of Raven Strikers getting blown up because uh, they keep using siege mode. Don't use siege mode outside of a capital ship fight. Or if you shoot a station. Well then, um, that leaves us to the conclusion about this ship. Overall, I liked. Uh, I like the Raven Striker. It's actually pretty good. The only thing that I don't like about this ship is, again, the very useless siege mode that gives you good damage on paper, good DPS on paper, but the damage application is pretty terrible. So, uh, this is one of those ships that I'd say needs a buff. But well, uh, please do tell me your opinion in the comments down below. Uh, I will be more than happy to read all of them. And with that being said, hope that you enjoyed, hope that this was helpful, and uh, hope that this was helpful. Stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.